I'm Rick Summers with this special MS Learn Online presentation. The Food and Drug Administration recently approved its first oral disease-modifying drug therapy for MS. The new drug, Gelenia, formerly known as Fingolimod, has been shown in clinical trials to reduce the frequency of clinical relapses and delay the accumulation of physical disability in relapsing forms of MS. To learn about this new treatment, I met with Dr. Aaron Miller, a professor of neurology at Mount Sinai Hospital and medical director at the Corinne Goldsmith Dickinson Center for Multiple Sclerosis in New York City. Well, this is really an exciting development in the uh, world of MS. And um, I can remember back in 19, up to 1993 when beta-seron was first approved, that patients would come to me and say, Doc, when are we going to have a medicine for MS? And then in 1993, we had the first medicine for MS, and almost immediately the question changed to, Doc, when are we going to have a pill? Mm -hmm. And so it's really exciting now in 2010 to be able to say, well, now we have an oral medication. And the name of that medicine is? It's called Gelenia, and it's a once-a-day capsule that patients will take. So how does Gelenia work? Well, it's a very interesting mechanism of action. Uh, it turns out that um, gelenia interferes with a receptor uh, on lymphocytes, the cells that do the damage uh, or initiate the damage in MS. It interferes with a receptor uh, that is necessary for lymphocytes to get out of lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. So what when people take gelenia, the lymphocytes are essentially imprisoned in the peripheral lymph nodes and they can't get out into the blood and, and then into the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord, where they would wreak havoc. Is this drug recommended for somebody who's newly diagnosed? When any drug comes on the market, I think a, a certain amount of, uh, of conservatism is appropriate in adopting the use of that medicine. So when a drug is in clinical testing, every effort is made to assure the safety of that drug. And yet only limited numbers of people uh, take the drug for relatively short periods of time before a drug comes to market. As a matter of fact, the, the pre-marketing experience with Gelenia has been much larger than that with any other drug that's ever come to market uh, for MS. Uh, some, something like 4,600 patient years of experience has been accrued with gelenia. And when you compare that to the old days when um, the interferons and copaxone were licensed, they came to market with perhaps 125 patients having received drug for a couple of years. So we have a lot more experience. Still, we know that it takes many patients, thousands and thousands of patients taking a drug for us to uncover sometimes the uh, less common but potentially severe adverse experiences. So I would say that it's reasonable, and this is my personal opinion, it's reasonable to talk with a newly diagnosed patient about the risks and benefits or the pros and cons of a new drug like Gelenia in comparison to the existing injectable drugs with which we have now quite a number of years of experience and, and know that those drugs are, are very safe. So it may be that some patients will, even early after the launch of Gelenia, use it as its first medication. But others will, and other physicians will want to take a more conservative approach. I think the same thing is true when we look at people who have been on the injectable therapies, either the interferons, Avonex, Beta-Seron, Rebif, or Extavia, or, uh, or glutaromeracetate, known as Copaxone. So many of those patients are doing extremely well on those drugs and tolerating those agents pretty well. They may not like them because they're injections and it's certainly no fun to take an injectable medication, but they're doing well and they're on safe medicines. In my view, a, a cautious approach would be to suggest that we wait a while for additional experience to accumulate with this drug, say over the next six to 12 months before we 
jump into switching all these patients to, to Gelenia. On, on the other hand, there are some patients who are on these drugs who are really having issues with their injections. Either they're, they're miserable, they have physical problems doing the injections because of changes in the tissue, or they're psychologically affected by the need to make these injections on a regular basis. And those patients might be more willing to accept the, the somewhat greater risks of Gelenia right from the get-go. Talk to me about the pros and cons of this new drug. The obvious pro is that this is a once-a-day oral medication. So uh, I think there, there's, there's little doubt that almost anyone would prefer a once-a-day oral medication to an injectable medicine that's administered depending on which one you're on, between once a week and once a day. So that's, that's the obvious benefit. A, a second potential benefit is it's possible, though not certain, that this drug is more effective than the injectable medicines. Uh, this drug has produced a, a greater than 50% reduction in relapse rate compared to patients taking placebo or dummy medicine. Uh, whereas the interferons and, and copaxone in their trials produced a relapse rate reduction of a, roughly 30 to 35 percent. Now that suggests that Gelenia may be more effective, but it doesn't prove it. To prove that uh, a drug is more effective than another one, you have to actually compare them head to head in the same trial. Now, Gelenia was compared in a one year trial to Avonex, the once a week interferon, and it did. Uh, patients did about twice as well on Gelenia in regard to relapse rate reduction as they did on Avonex. So that suggests that those data altogether suggest that Gelenia may be a more effective agent than the interferons or copaxone. But I want to emphasize again that in the, the responses to any drug is individual. And so we have many patients who are on interferons or copaxone who aren't having any signs of disease activity. So for them, their medicine seems to be working, and it's not necessarily the right decision to switch to Gelenia. And what's the downside? Well, there are, there are certain side effect issues with, with Gelenia. Um, when you first start to take Gelenia at the first dose only, you need to be monitored in a controlled medical setting because some patients who take Gelenia will have a slowing of their heart rate. This is uh, almost never of any significant consequence, but nonetheless does, does require monitoring in, in the physician's office um, or some monitored setting. A second uh, concern, and this hasn't happened frequently, but it's happened enough so that uh, precautions need to be taken. A condition known as macular edema, which is a swelling within the eye that can affect vision, occurred in 0.4%. Um, so that's about one out of 250 patients taking the marketed dose of fingolimod uh, in, the, in the clinical trials. So it's recommended that patients undergo a baseline ophthalmological examination before they start to take Gelenia and that they go back for an eye exam a few months later because sometimes the macular edema doesn't produce any uh, evident symptoms. Uh, another precaution is that gelenia may increase the risk of certain types of infections. And one particular, so of course the physician and the patient should be very tuned in to the possibility of infections and the patient should bring any untoward fevers or chills or other things that might suggest infection to the attention of their physician. But one particular concern is of the possibility of, uh, of herpes infections, and, and most uh, notably um, the herpes infection that's associated with chickenpox virus. So the status uh, immunologically of a patient with regard to, to chickenpox should be established before a patient goes on Gelenia. That means that you shouldn't give Gelenia to a patient unless that patient has had a clear history of chickenpox or you know that patient has been immunized against chickenpox. If you don't know or the patient hasn't been immunized, you can give the immunization and then wait at least a month before for the immunization to take before you give Gelenia. I should 
make a, a statement about another potential um, uh, concern or side effect of, of Jeleni, and that is that some patients will get elevations of liver enzymes. So one should screen patients for baseline liver function abnormalities before starting the drug and then repeat these tests periodically to make sure that one doesn't see an elevation. Is that a simple enzyme. blood test? Simple blood test. As with any treatment, be sure to consult with your physician to find out if Jelenia is right for you. Also be sure to check out the National Multiple Sclerosis Society's website at nationalmssociety.org for more breaking news on Jelenia. I'm Rick Summers for MS Learn Online. Thanks so much for watching.